Hi guys, welcome to this epic renovation that we are going to be sharing with you guys. As you can see behind me, there is a sandpit. Now, this is no ordinary sandpit. This is a sandpit that is going to be making way for some tiles and mortar to produce a beautiful tile slab for a garden shed. Now, as you can see behind me, Ash is busy tamping away the sand to make sure it is nice and level. Let's go and check out what exactly he is doing. <laughs> So this is the first time we are tiling outside. Now the reason why we're doing it ourselves is because we want to do a lot of tiling and we figured if we achieve this unlocked then we'll be able to master tiling skills and be able to tile the whole place. So we have prepared a little box area over here where we want to put in a little shed. Now underneath it is soil and then on top of that we put some stones in and then we put a lot of sand in because we've got lots of sand from the delivery people. So we, we ordered one cubic meter and they gave us like five. So we had a lot of sand to use. So I've been temping this away and it's been raining and it seems to be similar level obviously the professional they use the professional machines but we're just gonna wing it and see what happens so over here on my left we got a couple of buckets here this is gonna be used for mixing up the mixing tools and cleaning and all that kind of stuff don't know what we're doing then we've got the finishing tool section over here check it out we're using canola oil spray spray which we're going to be using on the actual wood to make it less sticky and then we got our little finishing tools. We don't really know what we're doing. We just have a lot of tools there just in case. We also have some stuff over here. So we got reciprocating saw. We got an angle grinder, a battery, and check this out. Boom, this is gonna be amazing. Look at this. It's a multi-purpose mixer to help us mix our mortar. We're gonna be using mortar for this project. And the difference that I learned recently between mortar and concrete is that mortar is good for sticking stuff and concrete is good for holding stuff. So we have normal mortar, we've got a bunch of tiles and we finally, to end it up, we've got PPE. We've got PPE City over here and we're gonna just try figuring it out. And lastly, so we've got the basic stuff, tile spaces, and we've got two types of mallet. We've got a black mallet, which we put a cloth around so it doesn't make a mark. And we've got a white mallet, which we kept the plastic around, which also won't make a mark. So, you know, you don't need to buy the white mallet. We just put it for fun. So. Let's go back over here and try figuring out what we're doing. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of pine pieces of wood and I've stuck them around this edge. And what I've worked out is the gradient fall of the land. And as you can see, if you look at the wall very carefully, it's a slight slope going in this direction. Now the problem with um, concrete slabs for um, sheds is that it needs to be perfectly straight. We're not doing a concrete pad, we're just doing uh, tiles. But the idea is you have to keep this straight. So while there's gonna be a fall in the gradient from the wall, we wanna keep this perfectly straight so our shed stays upright. I asked the shed people, they said that's what you have to do. So that's what we're doing, making this 100% straight. I don't know how it's gonna go with the rainfall. I guess it'll be covered up, so we don't need to worry about that. But we'll figure it out. So the level that I wanna go up to is around here. Kind of marked it. Once I got these planks of wood, then it made it a lot more easier. Just use the level to figure it out. And we've got like a, a rainwater pipe over there. So we're gonna be using the reciprocating saw to cut that down to level. It's gonna be fun. And we're gonna be using the angle grinder to cut our tiles around this level so it's gonna look good. It's gonna be fun. We don't know what we're doing. Are you excited about it? I am so excited. Let's get cracking because I wanna get my hands dirty. So the first thing we need to do is we need to unbox that mixer. So that's your job. Okay, let's do it. Thanks, Ash. This is a full ball multi-purpose mixer. Now it is 1,600 high watts, high power. So it is going to do the trick for us. So the reason why we're using a mixer is because we saw people on YouTube and they would use like a spade and it took like forever and it was hard. And one guy on YouTube, he was using a mixer and he made it look easy. Yep. So with this, it comes a big motor. And actually what you'll notice is it has two handles because we did get a bunch that just had one handle only, like the cheaper varieties. But this one feels like it could be a bit easier to hold because it's got like a bit more ergonomically friendly handle. Okay, then we've got the actual mixer itself. I'll give that to you to hold, Ash, because it does come with, with a paddle. paddle. Yeah, and one thing also extra is we saw the paddles in Bunnings and they were all out of stock and they were pretty much the same price as a full prone mixer. So we figured we'd, no just, sense. Yeah. we'd just get the mixer and the professional stuff. Exactly. All right. So it comes with extensions, so don't worry if you feel like that's just too short. Woo. All right, let's see how this does work out. 
Okay, so all you have to do is screw in, this is really basic, screw in the rod like so until it screws in no more. And then you just want to pop in the paddle at the top and screw it in also. It does come with its own spanner so you can tighten up a little bit, which I will do because the worst thing you want is for it to break whilst you're using it. So you just tighten up with the two screws that they provide you, which is pretty tight. And that's pretty tight. Okay, perfect. I think that is it. We're done. Wow! <laughs> oh my god, that's insane! So I got a bucket here. It looks fun. It looks like I'm going to do laundry in it. Except we're going to be mixing the mortar inside this one. So let's find out the consistency of the water and mortar we need to mix. So this is Bastion mortar. Simply adds water. Now. A couple of people out there, or a lot of people, they say you need to use plasticizer, which makes the mortar easy to work with. We're going to see how hard it is to work with it normally. Ugh. Now, around the back here, it says you use 3.2 litres of water per 20 grams, 20 kg of mortar. So we need to measure out 3.2 litres of water first. This bucket actually has like a little markings. It's got 11, 9, 8, 7. So if we go to 3.2 and then just pour it in there and then just add the mortar. Yep. There you go, that looks good. Okay, I guess before we get going, we need to follow the boss and the boss's rules are... PPE when you're using this sort of stuff because you do not want to be inhaling this horrible dust. So Ash, I'm going to order you to get some PPE on and get yourself protected. <laughs> Can't breathe. So that looks pretty good. I added a tiny bit more water just to make it a bit more slushy. Mm. Feels all right. Yeah, it's gooey. Good. So I'm trying to get to around this height. So that looks pretty good to me because the tile is going to go on top. But what I'll do before I get in mortar on the wood, I'll just spray some oil. This is just some cooking oil, the cheapest one I can get. But the idea is it's non stick. So Hopefully the wood will be easier to get out once the mortar's dry. Just drawing a little bit of zigzag patterns. Time to lay down the first tile. Yeah, that was like a good height. So I'm putting it in the middle of this wall and right angle to that. It's my favorite part. I've always wanted to do this. Just hammering it down into the bed of mortar and let's see if it's level. So this side needs to go down a little bit more. Hundred percent level this way, and then this way it says the back side needs to go down, or the front side needs to go up a little bit. So I'm just going to scrape some in. Zero there, and here 0 0.05. So just one tap on the right. That's on zero. There you go, zero and zero. All right, you've got another 40 left to do, so get working. All right, so it's looking good. One thing I've got to say is, don't use the digital level. 
because it drives you mental. I'm getting like 0.05 and I move a little bit. It goes minus, you know, 0.05. I think that'll probably be my limit because it looks good to me by eye, but it says it's sometimes zero or 0.05 out. Ash, you know what? I'm actually quietly, I'm not quite impressed, but I'm actually very impressed with you. Yes, I agree with you. We need a little bit more mortar. But if it's your first tile that you ever laid, it looks really pretty. I'm so proud of you. Well done. Go, finish the rest now. Yalla, go. Time to make some more mortar. Two hours till sunset. Yeah, maybe it might be worth getting a bigger bucket. Maybe I'll use the bin instead. Yeah, then you can mix kind of... two bags at once, right? Great, do it. Go for it. So good. Yeah, I'm just going to go quickly pee. Yeah. And then I'll come back and mix Definitely some more mortar. Definitely put that on the internet. been bashing out a bit more this afternoon slowly getting the hang of it just getting the hang of the elevation all that stuff mixing i'm putting definitely more than recommended 3.2 maybe 3.5 to up to four liters i mix in a little bit of water first and then i bash in the mortar then i put the water on top i find that the the mortar does come out a little bit clumpy but that's as expected as i'm not using plasticizer i'm it's working fine it's drying really slowly anyway so i don't need to to rush it and we're balancing it's a lot easier now that the main tiles are laid because you pretty much just have to make sure that the tiles connect to each other and then it's all about just making sure the level continues on to the bits that are untiled but the bits that are tiled you just maybe you just have to connect it so you run your finger over it and just make sure that there isn't too much of a divot of course if there is a divot you know sometimes you, you give yourself a little bit of easement you know 0.1 you know that that digital level is a killer I try getting 0.0, .0 most of the time, but sometimes I allow myself to go to 0.15. And I do find that if I just position it in a slightly different area, it does change the level. I think because the tiles are slightly bumpy as it is, there's a bit of a uh, gradient on there and a little bit of grout on there too. So I'm just going to continue bashing it out and uh, hopefully, got another six bags. Hopefully, I'll, I'll get more done very soon. So back to it. All right, guys, so I'm making waves on this project, as you can see. All the tiles are beautifully laid out. Just got this section to do. Now there is a little hindrance. That is a stormwater inspection pipe. What I'm gonna do, because um, I think I can work with it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut this pipe a little bit lower, make this flush with the tiling level, and just tile around it. So that way I still have access to the inspection pipe. I don't need to get any new heads because they, they don't sell the cool ones over here in Bunnings and uh, we'll just keep on going without having to waste any time. So first up, I'm just gonna make a mark at the bottom just to see how deep this inspection cover goes. Now this is usually just stuck on by glue, but I have actually removed it previously. So I'm just gonna give it a little swivel. As you can see, the glue has worn off. So I'll reapply that once it's, it's ready. And I can see that the height Obviously you can, you can, there's a bit of variance. You can choose how deep you want it to go, but I guess the deeper the better. And the height I want to aim for is seven centimeters. So that means the inner cut is going to be seven centimeters and the total height here is 10 centimeters. So what I want to do first is find out the height this should be to make it level burrow in a little bit more that is bang on zero so this is the mark where I want to go and then I want to measure seven centimeters above so I'll give myself some room to play with because I can always sand it down afterwards and this is the cut line I want to go this line here Pretty 
happy with how that turned out. So now I'm just gonna mark out how to cut the tile. And I guess I'll just hand draw it. Something like that. So I gave it a bit of a butcher's and like, yeah, I could have done a neater job. I could have scribed it better. Preparation. First time using the angle grinder to do this sort of task. I reckon, yeah, maybe if I was a bit more focused or maybe my next time I'll do it better. But I'm just going to use a bit of um, mortar anyway to fill out those little imperfections and maybe paint it and you won't even see it. Just let up maybe a bit of, maybe use the grout. But for me... Yeah, this I'm just using these old tiles because they they're just there. I'm trying out this project for the first time, so I'm happy with the result. Alright guys, so managed to cut. Obviously I did a bit of a butcher job, but it's gonna be maybe I'll cover it up with a bit of gravel or maybe put a bit more to tidy up. First time cutting it, so I'm not that sad. I'm alright. And I don't these are scrap tiles anyway, so I'm just having a bit of fun. I need to learn how to do it clean, super clean. Maybe if I draw it with a template and just take my time, or maybe I get a smaller angle grinder, or I don't know, there must be a tool to cut it in circles. Maybe I'll check on the YouTube, find out what's going on. But anyway, got the slab on, it's covering up the inspection pipe. I'll put a little bit of gravel on top of it just to bed it up a bit so it's uh, level. I figured I'd go a little bit lower just to give myself that space. And uh, I'm just gonna put the second tile on now. Um, I kind of butchered that one as well. I stuck it into two pieces, but I'm going to use a bit of mortar to stick it back together. Again, these are just old old tiles I had lying around, so I just wanted to get rid of them anyway for this project. So maybe I'll just lay this one with you guys just to see how it works out. I don't know if i got enough mortar there. Hopefully I do. I'll just give it a shot. So I've just got a bit of mortar here. I'm going to add a bit more to the bed here. I find that having lots of bumps is good because when you hammer it in, it makes it nice and firm and it gives... Um, space for the mortar to displace underneath because if you have if you pack it too hardly there's no space underneath for it to displace so you need to really really smash it or even sometimes take the tile out and lay it again after taking some off but let's just get as much mortar on there as possible and let's get some so it displaces on the underside here i want to pad this out So I'm going to stop in this corner now, just give it a couple of taps, line it up visually, and just give it a feel, feels good. Once I'm happy with the feels, put in the spaces. And then I'll just pack some underneath this one, just to raise it a little bit, just like that. Alright guys, so I just finished tiling, it's now all complete, it's pretty interesting, um, I think towards the end, that's my final two, I didn't even need the little clippers, because all I needed to make sure was that they look square and finish it all up, so I just did that with my eyeballs and they look pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I've mixed up one more bag of mortar and I'm just going to spread it around the base here, grab a chunk like that and I'll try squeezing in inside as much as possible because I want it to be locked nice and tight. So. All right, guys, it's all laid out. I'm happy, very happy with it. Obviously, future I'll do it better, but this is the first time. It looks very, very solid, but I'm going to seal it now with some grout. Now, grout is 
non-porous or porous, basically water is going to go through it. So if you want water to not go through it, use silicon. And that, I guess, will let weeds grow less underneath or whatever it is. Well, anyway, I'm using grout like everyone else does on the internet, except I'm doing it with a difference. I found these bottles around the house. They're over two years old. I read the label. It says they actually expire 12 months when stored. So these, this is out of date. But I'm going to use them anyway because I don't really care too much about this project. And I think it will, should do the job. So I'm just going to cut the tip. I'm going to show you actually the two methods of doing it. One is the way they tell you to do it. I'm like, got to squeeze and it comes out very, very slowly. So what I do, just to speed up the process, is uh, something maybe I'll show you over here. If you watch some guys on the internet, they kind of just like brush it in and then wash it away afterwards. So this I find a lot easier to take up the lid and just get the dollops out. Oh, nice dollop. And get your beautiful fingers. Wear some gloves, maybe the blue gloves would be better. And just wipe it in, trying to get it in there as much as possible. I'm literally shocked at the mess that is behind me. But um, it looks like fun. I have to say, it does look like fun. I guess at the end of it, maybe you wash it off and then it comes off, hopefully. Or you're just left with stains of grout <laughs> on the tiles. <laughs> So according to the instructions, it says, leave it to dry for around 15 minutes and then use a lightly damp sponge. Not light, not light, not too much water. That's what it says. So I'm going to mess it up, but I've got a spare one just in case. So lightly damp and rub it away. So that looks good. Let's give it a shot. Should come out nice and beautiful. It was fun layering it on at least. <laughs> Had a giggle. <laughs> wow, it works. Surprised it works. Yeah, it's pretty solid. It's pretty good. Look at that. I'm jumping on it. I'm happy. It's good. It looks good. Now, one mistake obviously I did make was with the grouting. I didn't know what I was doing. So I kind of just like plopped. <laughs> I tried it two ways, yeah. One, I tried it doing the proper way where you have to rub it off after 10 minutes. But as soon as I rubbed it off after 10 minutes, it actually rubbed off completely. So I had to use more grout to fill in the holes again. And I tried leaving it for like an hour or a day. And then the next day it was just rock solid. <laughs> so I had to use one of these bad boys, this angle grinder. And I tried lots of different discs. The one that worked, this one's called a, a multi-purpose strip disc. Kind of looks like this kind of situation. And that one got rid of the grout and it gave it a nice, nice clean finish. But these discs are pretty expensive. So I kind of like gave up because I'm going to be putting a, a shed on top. So lesson learned, grouting, maybe uh, maybe just 15 minutes and then rub it off. <laughs> but you know, considering Ash, that, it looks we, pretty cool. We can walk on it. Now it's time to play hopscotch. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. <laughs>